Yes, my lord. Um, uh, your ladyship and my lords, let me dive right into my submissions. And I will demonstrate, my lords, that contrary to the submissions made by my landed friends, Articles 47, right together with Articles 50, and Article 25.1c on the right to a fair hearing were complied with. And I will show, my lords, that as of the time that notice was received in Senate by the Speaker on the 9th of October 2024, notices were issued to the petitioner to file all the documents as prescribed and to defend himself to every question that was raised in the National Assembly, which, my lord, you recall, had voted by 282 members to impeach the Deputy President. The right of fair trial, fair administrative action under Article 47, and the right to a fair hearing were therefore preserved. And I will just demonstrate as I move on to show that once the 16th and the 17th were gazetted as the dates when the Deputy President would be heard, and that would be the Wednesday and Thursday of October 2024. The motion, the seven-day period when motions and pleadings were exchanged, then commenced. And all parties were aware that the Senate investigations would take two days. Your Ladyship and my Lords, parties were then invited to respond to every allegation. This was a two-tire trial, my lords. <clears throat> the National Assembly, sitting as the initial uh, chamber that received the impeachment motion, voting in the affirmative for the impeachment motion, no brainer. The Senate, as a trial chamber, my lord, Articles 94 and 95, uh, donating powers to Senate and to the National Assembly respectively, the Senate then proceeded to afford an opportunity. And I want to just demonstrate, my Lord, that Article 1-2 of the Constitution designates Senate as the National Assembly as speaking for the people under Article 1. Because the people may either access their powers directly or through their elected representatives. So my Lord must read the Constitution in the sense that the Constitution then, speaking through the people, Senate was the trial chamber that undertook the trial as by the Constitution contemplated. My Lord, what happened on the 16th was the commencement of the trial. And it's important to respond to this factual question that the petitioner participated in the entire trial. Only the petitioner, my lords, had the opportunity to cross-examine all the witnesses presented by the National Assembly that presented this case before the Senate. Senate sitting as a trial chamber as a whole and therefore as a quasi-judicial body each senator, considering the allegations and bundles, served to every senator uh, prior to the trial. My lords, it was on the 17th, and this is an, an important distinction, at 2.30 p.m. after Senator that joined at 1.15 p.m., that Senior Counsel Paul Mwiten presented to Senate an adjournment on the basis that he could not trace the petition of the Deputy President at the time. He informed the Senate that he, were, he had learned of his client's illness but did not reach him. He then sought an adjournment to 5 p.m. He had two and a half hours 
to trace this crime. My lords, there's a curious point here, and this is important, my lords. The provisions of Article 145, 5, and 6, and I want to refer to those articles, provide, my lord, that at an impeachment hearing before Senate, a party may be represented 145.5, the president or deputy president <coughs> shall have the right to appear and be represented before the special committee during investigations. This article was wholly satisfied because the deputy president was present throughout the trial. My Lord, then Article 145.6a and b then step in. If the claims have been substantiated, the Senate shall, after according the President an opportunity to be heard, vote on the impeachment charges. My Lord, Senate accorded the Deputy President an opportunity to be heard. How was that accorded, my Lord? That was accorded, my Lord, first to be heard through the pleadings filed in Senate. That is one. But number two, my Lord, he was present during the entire presentation of the case by the National Assembly. But third, my Lord, he was given and afforded an adjournment at 2.30, from 1 p.m. to 2.30. At 2.30, he was accorded an adjournment to come back at 5 p.m. My Lord, what happened at 5 p.m. is summarized at paragraphs 25 to 28 of our submissions. And it goes like this, my Lord. At 5 p.m., my Lord, the Deputy President, the counsel for the Deputy President, Senior Counsel Paul Mwite, submitted or told Senate that he could not trace his client, but that he had been admitted at Karen Ostro. He neither presented a medical report, nor a report from any doctor. And that is an important observation. But beyond failing to present any document to demonstrate the truthfulness of the health status of the Deputy President, my Lord, Counsel and his team, Senior Counsel Paul Mwite, Eminent Counsel Elisha Ngoya, and the entire team proceeded to walk out. And why did they proceed to walk out, my Lord? Perhaps they did not read the wording of the Constitution and or the standing orders. Because our party, my Lord, may be presented or may be present at trial by himself or through an advocate or representative. In this case, my Lord, every opportunity was presented to the respondents to present, but they opted, my Lord, not to proceed and not to provide any document to Senate at that point to, my Lord, uh, uh, confirm, my Lord, at the point that their client or the Deputy President in that matter was unwell and admitted. Senate then proceeded, my Lords, to vote on that question. My Lord, this is where standing order 85 comes in and rule 6 and 7. I will, I will elaborate. Number one, my Lord, understanding order 85, senators on a procedural motion may vote by acclamation. That vote was carried and Senate then voted to proceed. My Lord, the catch here is rule 12 of the rules that govern the proceedings. Once the 16th and the 17th of October 2024 were gazetted, as the days that we had to proceed, that Senate proceeded, my Lord, the proceedings had to be sequential and could not be stopped because of the requirement that the proceedings were time-bound and were to conclude in 10 days. The last day, my Lord, that the proceedings were to conclude was the Saturday, the next day. My Lord, unfortunately, Council, Senior Council Mwite and the the Hansard will demonstrate this, my Lord, had applied for an adjournment to the following Tuesday. My Lord, we, we have demonstrated that the petitioner dragged the carpet from his own feet, deliberately decided to sabotage his own appearance when he had been in court for the, in, in, in Senate for the last two days up to 1.15 p.m. before deciding not to be reachable by his entire team 
and the team making it worse by disappearing. My lord, my lords and your ladyships, the petitioner had taken part in the cross-examination of all the parties. No case, my lord, has been presented before you that one, there was a violation of the standing orders of Senate. That's number one. Number two, that Senate did not consider some material defense to any of the charges that were proffered against the Deputy President. My lord, I just want to, uh, for clarity of thought, submit that even on the submission that my learned friend Mr. Masharia made before this court, this court, that there was additional evidence that was entertained by the speaker under Rule 6 and 7 by hearing a witness called Mr. Njomo. I remember that submission, my lord. My lord, that was a substantiation of a charge on economic crimes that failed. Only, my lords, five out of the 11 charges proffered against the Deputy President Petitioner hearing succeeded. Only five out of the 11 charges. How else can Senate have been judicious? It threw out six charges. None of the petitions brought before you seems to commend Senate for standing its high ground and throwing out six of the charges. And that is what good faith uh, uh, would mean, my lord. That out of the six charges, my lord, my lord, the deputy president was convicted on the gross violation of articles 10 to AB 27 and 129 on the shareholding remark. He was also convicted on the other grounds on national cohesion and on the question that is live before this court, my lord, that is on violating his code that requires him to undertake certain function and undermining the function of the National Security Intelligence Service. Ms. Kimodo of Kimodo and Company Advocates would want the Deputy President to apologize on that count. That's a live matter. But my lord, in the grant of conservatory orders, I submit, and this is because I argued Munya, I argued Wajira, I argued Munya, I argued Mate. So I'm, I'm an authority in this area. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but Lord, in the, on the, the principles that the court considered, the Supreme Court considered in the Munya case, but public interest, I think on the scales, weighed highest that this court must take into account the import of a conservatory order issued ex parte against public interest. My Lord, this is a country that is built on the constitution of Kenya 2010 with a president whose powers are defined under Article 131 of the constitution. And Article 131 as a writer that the president's role as the chief executive of the country shall be performed by himself directly and through delegation by the deputy president. This country, therefore, cannot contemplate an interregnum. That means space of power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An interregnum is not contemplated by the constitution. The position of the deputy president, my lords and my lady, must therefore be filled at all times. And that is why the applicants know well that this country must move on and have a deputy president sworn in because of the dictates of Article 131 of the Constitution. My lady and my lords, a conservatory order is therefore inconceivable in the terms defined in the Munya case. A conservatory order of the nature issued by Justice Mwongo is not only is not only unfeasible, but flies in the face of principles of public interest. <coughs> the interest in Meru County then 
was to avoid an interregnum in the governance structure so that Meru County could not collapse. And we took the bold measure to go to court at that time to protect women. This court would only use that authority to support the appointment of His Excellency Honorable Professor Kivure Kibiki. So that this country moves to the second level. I would urge you to discharge the conservatory order on that principle alone that the wider public interest is greater than the interest of the former deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. But Lord, wherein would his remedy lie, well, I am friendly about you submit, if it is a salary of one month, that would be compensable by damages. If it is a week salary that is six that I should have been or to have been deputy president, that would be compensated in monetary terms. But this country, my Lord, cannot be at a standstill and be held through litigation because we need to have that position filled. My Lord, if I move to the other point, my Lord, we have submitted that since every opportunity was accorded to the Deputy President to present his case and that he failed to present his case, my Lord, every argument before this court every argument before this court by Malani friends on the import of the processes of an impeachment fall on their back they fall on their back my lord because the authority in my movie Sonko and Nairobi City County Assembly and I'm, again I argued this one my lord in part I was in this matter in this case my lord the impeachment was upheld. In this case, Michael Mbufi Sonko had sought to fold the process leading to his impeachment because there were no reasons given for the impeachment. The Court of Appeal rightly stated that one, there was the Hansard that contained reasons. Two, my Lord, in terms of an impeachment, my Lord, Mike Movie Song was challenging the approach where the Senate sat as a whole, as a committee of the whole. The court finding, my lord, that that is an option that is open to Senate and cannot speak to the lawfulness or otherwise. Council on the other side submitted that there was need for a committee. Senate, in its proceedings, my lord, in its wisdom, had voted to proceed through the whole house and accorded the petitioner, all his rights that were due to him at the initial stage, only for the petition to, petitioner not to avail himself to take advantage of the second opportunity to be had. My Lord, we submit, my Lord, that unless the processes of Senate are faulted by my landed friends, the Impeachment became final when the vote was taken before midnight on the 17th. And His Excellency, the Deputy President, Rigathi Gashagwa, stood impeached henceforth. Unfortunately, my lords, this is an impeachment which has no comeback. It is like a death. You have died. You can't come back to life. But you can have certain claims in succession. <laughs> and that is why we have the law of succession. Rights and remedies then come into question. <coughs> My Lord, set aside the conservatory orders. Let us move on, my lords. The bigger public interest tilts in favor of the appointment of His Excellency Professor Kidure Kindiki, a very good man. Thank you. Thank you. My Lord and my lady,
My name is Mudomi Dionkolu for the Secured Interested Party. And to that end, we have filed a notice of preliminary objection dated the 24th of October, the year 2024. We have, in addition to that, filed a list in bad of authorities on that preliminary objection. And that list in bad is dated the 25th day of October 